this is absolutely uh, infuriating to me when I saw this. So um, there is an incredible, uh, I would say, progressive candidate running in Michigan for governor. I absolutely love him. I've been watching him and hoping for the best for him, Abdul El Saeed. Um, and then I saw an article the other day and I saw a video of a man who is running against him completely spreading Muslim fear propaganda against him. Uh, super conspiracy theory that he's jihad and his parents were involved in, in you know, ISIS and, and just absolute madness. So I want to address that it's, you'd think that we would get used to that kind of stuff by now, but I'm not. And every time I see it, it just infuriates me because this man is exactly who we need to be in a position of power in our country. And um, it's just sad that Americans buy into this shit, uh, these lies, these fear, the fear mongering. So um, his running opponent is Patrick Colbeck who is the current state senator in Michigan, uh, uh, the 7th District. So this is uh, an article from uh, BuzzFeed, MSN, and you can watch the video on YouTube and also on this website, this anti-Muslim website that he was actually doing the speech for at the time. Uh, the anti-Muslim uh, group is called United West. So they have a huge por a section on El Said. Uh, and um, Colbeck on their website and all the anti-Muslim propaganda and videos and it's, it's, it's lies and it's America and it has to stop. Okay, so um, the, this is the article and forgive me, I don't have glasses. I lost them and I'm getting them back. Uh, next week, I had to wait for my insurance to cover them, but um, so if I'm like squinting, sorry about it. Uh, a Republican running for governor in, the, in Michigan is using unfounded conspiracy theories against a Muslim American rival. Patrick Colbeck, currently a state senator in Michigan's 7th District, uh, used a typical and unfounded anti-Muslim conspiracy theory during a presentation about his Muslim American Democratic rival, suggesting he is part of an unfounded Muslim plot to engage in civilized jihad that is subversely attempting to take over the country. And if you go to um, Patrick Colbert's Twitter account right now, I just checked just about an hour ago, and his first two tweets are anti-Muslim tweets smearing Abdul El Said who is running for governor against him. I just feel like it's so sad the amount of lies. We have politicians lying to us. We have media lying to us. We have, uh, in, a, in another report I'm going to tell you about, we have uh, trusted institutions that are supposed to be protecting Americans lying to us. It's all about money and power, and we are uh, in the grasp of some very slimy, deceiving uh, politicians and corporations that want nothing but money and could care less about the people. So back to it. Um, the candidate Patrick Colbeck, who is currently a state senator of Mission 7th District, made the remarks about Abdul El Said while delivering a slideshow at an event held by the United West in April 2018. The group has been classified as an active anti-Muslim group by the Southern Poverty Law Center, which tracks the activity of hate organizations. So um, this is from his video where he starts talking uh, about how the Muslims are trying to take over uh, the government in Michigan. So this is him talking, uh, and he's talking about Hamtrak, which is a city in Michigan. Now, Hamtrak, it, four out of the six city council members are Muslim. So that's what he's referring to here. He says, so Hamtrak is now the first majority Muslim city council. 
Then he shows a slide of El Said and it says position of influence. He goes on to say, but we also have somebody that I will likely be running against in the general election, Dr. Abdul El Said, whose parents apparently have ties to Muslim to the Muslim Brotherhood back in Egypt. This is scary stuff. Holbach said they're already advertising him as the first Muslim governor, so this is a big deal. So uh, El Said's parents came from Egypt. They came over here. His dad went to university and became an engineer. His mom also be, uh, got an education, became a nurse, and his stepmother now was or born and raised in Michigan. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm sure they're plotting. They're plotting, plotting and scheming. They're, they're hard, hard people. Uh, so he goes on to say, oh, I'm sorry, I already said that. So uh, Kobach's presentation was loaded with false conspiracy theories that have been pushed by the far right to undermine Muslim Americans. A recent BuzzFeed news analysis found that the state and local Republican politicians and officials have publicly attacked Islam in 49 states since 2015, typically with impunity. Um, he goes on to say, there's a lot of pressure being applied in our society right now. You're seeing Muslim legislators in state legislature, and you're seeing also a push at a local level at city councils, civilized so then he shows a slide that says, where is it? Do I have it? Oh, I do. So he shows a slide at this point, which says civilized jihad techniques. It's just garbage. He's garbage. So here's his slide. It says civilized jihad techniques. Keep the infidels ignorant of the true nature and progress of Sharia, some other things, but at the bottom, and he has this underlined, because this is the point he's trying to stress to the people, because they really have to be afraid. They really have to be afraid. Place Muslim brothers in positions from which they can exercise influence. <gasps> you have to, if you don't know who El Said uh, is, wait till you hear, he's incredible. I want him in a position of influence. I want him in a position of influence and many more of him in positions of influence. So um, this video they also have up on YouTube and it's called Sharia Crime Stoppers. Thank you. Thank you for saving us. Douche. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, so it goes on to say the article, well-funded anti-Muslim groups like the Center for Security Policy and Act for America, once fringe elements uh, of conservative, sorry, this is actually, once fringe elements of conservative movements that have recently risen to prominence in the Trump area, uh, era have alleged for years that Muslim Americans are subverting U.S. laws through the practice of Sharia and that it would replace and supersede the laws of the land. Uh-huh. Fear mongering. I just have a question. Are these people really scared? Are they really scared? Do they really believe that it's going to be this huge jihad revolution, as they say, and they're going to take over the United States? Or are they just filled with hate? And anyone who's not like them, they don't want in their society. And, you know, the story is all this time. Anyone who's not um, participating in the same religion as them, they don't want in their society. So are they really scared? Are they really scared for their welfare? The people who believe, who, who say this shit and spread this shit? Or are they just full of just ignorance and hatred? towards anyone who's not like them. I think that they're scared, but not for their lives. They are just scared out of ignorance that they don't want to, they, they just feel like they can't interact with people who have different views and different religions. 
I don't know. I'm glad I don't understand them. Um, so there is a page promoting this. This is, they have an entire page promoting this on, uh, United West's website. So that's the anti-Muslim group that this, uh, candidate Patrick Colbert was addressing. Um, they have an entire page on the website, which also has a section called Sharia Crime Stoppers. And they describe the candidate, Stephen Kobach, as having studied and learned the history of Sharia the Muslim Brotherhood, and their plan to take down America. They say one of his potential opponents in a, a, is a Sharia-compliant Democrat candidate, Abdul Al Saeed. The website says they also have five embed, embedded videos and words that hyperlink another page that says Al Saeed is displaying an ISIS hand gesture. So then they have these two pictures of Al Saeed. This one is when he was way younger. This one looks like he was younger as well because I've seen him recently and he definitely looks a lot different. But regardless, Al Saeed is doing this and smiling. And apparently that is an ISIS hand gesture. Oh dear, signaling ISIS. Hey guys, we're about to take over. You know, you gotta... <sighs> okay. Claims that Al Said may harbor Islamist convictions and be a Trojan horse are not unfounded, the website says, especially given the reality of what some have dubbed a, self, a stealth jihad. He is a stealth jihad, is what they're calling him. I, I just, you have to have such a thick skin if you're going to get out up and you're going to speak out. Um, but this is, this is, this is so sad and I feel so bad for him and his family. Um, it's very unfair and it it's heartbreaking. But I'm sure they're, they're familiar with ignorance and they've probably dealt with it before, but it should not exist. It should not exist. I'm sure it always will. But uh, I would love for this man to be elected. So let's talk about El Said. If you haven't heard about him yet, he is incredible. And if you're in Michigan and you can vote for, for governor, please take a look at him. Look at his policies. Go to his website. Uh, he is for you. He is for the planet. He is incredible. Oh, I really love when I see great candidates like this running. So uh, Al Said is 33 years old. He's a physician who once served as the head of the Detroit Health Department as health director. He would be the country's first Muslim governor if elected in November. He's a progressive favorite in the race and has been described as charismatic. So let me read you, um, Sean Hannity endorsed uh, the guy running against him who did these horrible videos, uh, Patrick Colbeck. So that tells you a lot about Patrick Colbeck, eh? So uh, back to Al Said, he was, he's 33 years old. He was born in Detroit, Michigan. He went to the University of Michigan. He went to Oriel College. He went to Oxford and got uh, his PhD. He went to Columbia and he got his MD. He had uh, the Rhodes Scholarship Award, the Paul and Daisy Soros Fellowship for New Americans Award, which they have nothing to do with George Soros. Um, he was, he served as executive director of the health department for two years. He was the youngest health commissioner in a major U.S. city. Previously, he was an assistant professor, professor in the Department of Epidemiology at Columbia University. I could talk about him all day, though, because I just feel so much hope when I see these incredible candidates. And I just want everyone to know about him and just disgusting what this other man is spreading we, what do we want America to represent? Trump, fear-mongering, hate, racism, or hope? Wow, how about this one? Simply hope.